Hi, I'm Michael Gilmore. Welcome to Inside the Business Mind, where we establish that understanding state of mind is the key variable for high-performing individuals and teams. In this edition, I'm talking to Ian Selby, owner and director of Timberwood, a business delivering bespoke windows and doors for heritage buildings throughout Greater London and the South. Ian and I have been working together for almost a year now. Ian's business is currently on target to achieve in one month the same amount of sales revenue as the whole of the previous year. So welcome Ian, great yeah. to join you here. Thanks Mike, good to be here. Okay. So I guess uh, what would be great for listeners to maybe hear first is how you might summarise your experience or, or what the, the journey was like. Well, the journey up until the point of the coaching was, I was pretty successful in business already. Business was okay, quite a few employees, um, but I'd done that through basically hard work. I sort of got to a point where inside of myself I couldn't see how to get stuck. My business had stagnated at a certain level and I couldn't seem to see to get it any larger than that actually was. And that caused an awful lot of frustrations, a lot of stress, um, late nights, a lot of forced sort of situations to to um, control the business and guide the business. So. I remember that very well, a year ago, spending time when I should be with the family, working hard, myself pushing it forwards, and and yeah, and I wanted to get away from that. If there was a word, it was stuck. Lacking fun, everything got a bit serious. It was like hanging on to what I had, trying to get to somewhere I wanted to go, and feeling stuck. It was that stuckness. And what did you initially put that stuckness down to? Everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else, my business, my talents, um, what I knew, my experience. Um, it's like I knew I wanted to be unstuck. I knew I didn't want it to be that way, but it was like I was forced, like driven to it. It had to be that way. It's the way it had already, already all been. And I'd seen other people building bigger businesses than me and being more confident and affluent. And, and I watched them and they didn't seem to be looking as stressed out as I was. Um, and I had some of the trappings of success, nice car, money, um, but I didn't have time and I was stressed and, uh, and I wanted more. Uh, and, I, and I was starting not to enjoy work actually, to be honest with you. Um, I, I was thinking back then actually when I first sort of uh, approached about the coaching was to maybe bottling the business up and going off to do something else and that, and that was something that um, at that time, uh, looking back now, I don't see how we, I was thinking that, but I remember that was one of my key reasons was to have achieved enough as I could. That's where I was at. Yeah, and then what did you realise in the in the early days, I guess? How how did you come about implementing that change or taking some action? What I noticed about the change is that, is that the, the, so the change didn't come immediately. It took a little bit of time. You know, I'm very stubborn, very persistent. Um, I, I'm basically a carpenter with no O levels. I'm very sure of myself of what I've achieved. What I've got, I've worked hard for, and I wasn't going to give that up easily. And the ways that I choose to get there, I'm very determined that was the right way because it had worked up until then. So, um, but what I started to see was what was probably in the way was it was my way. I was the control guy. I set all the parameters. I was the one who set the targets and had to achieve these things that I, I thought we had to achieve. I uh, spent time in the wrong areas of the business. Um, also my demeanour, my personality, seeing that that was such a big influence on the business itself. Um, making sure that people were working as hard as they should so I got as much as I could out of them instead of relating to them, empowering them, trusting them and it just became a whole lot more enjoyable and people started to show up producing things that were quite surprising and then we started to work as a team. So after a period of time of me, I suppose, noticing my personality, making the changes just in the moment, noticing like, oh, wow, I'm just thinking that about that guy. It's like, it's not true. It was just what I was thinking. And I could just let go of that. But without the coaching, I wouldn't have seen it. I wasn't even aware that I was seeing these things about other people and the restrictions that that brought. But what, once I let go of that and I saw them and saw the potential of them and the potential of our customers and our supply network, 
everybody started to seem a lot more happy, especially me. And actually, a lot of people, I started to trust people and they were doing more and I was doing less and it just keep bubbling and, and the more we grow and leaders seem to pop up and it's, it's like I'm not even, so I'm not controlling it anymore. It's a free flowing and it's, it's a lot more enjoyable right now. Yeah, I guess that, that may all sound very appealing to people and what I normally find is that it's the belief in it. You know, you seem to have worked through that stage of seeing beyond the quick fix, which is mm. the number one thing people most desire. And secondly, of course, that crucial kind of way it looks is as though they need to change outside of them. Mm. So hence the control, other people need to improve, improve and you need to step up and, and be monitoring that. Absolutely, that's how it was. So, so I'd love to hear some more about kind of how that traditional way of quick fixes versus persevering with that to see something fresh and new, mm. get an insight on that. Mm. And also about the people. Yeah, in the past I, I, I've done my fair share of training courses. I, I've done my uh, smart this, attitude this, leadership this, and you know, they, they were really, really great and they worked for a really short period of time. They gave me, gave me some new skills or some limited skills and they gave me something else to do. Something else to also think about that I now need to be this way that wasn't automatically me, trying to be someone that I wasn't. That just in some ways made it worse. I'd come in and have the idea of the day, the week of the, the idea of the week, and that would put even more pressure onto the workforce saying, oh no, Ian's been on another course and this is what's happened. Because it was an outward bound response. So I learned something that was a new technique and I went and put it onto my business. Um, very frustrating, Did, didn't, didn't get much out of those. Um, there were a few things that you learned here and there, but nothing that I would say made me, my life any easier or any better. Um, they're, they're, they've all got values in some places, but not, not in what I was actually looking for. Um, on the second point, the empowerment side, um, I mean, I'll share something about one of our ladies downstairs. She came to us at 55 years old and had been sat in a corner for most of her life and given small jobs to do and, and treated like a bit of a tea lady. And she's now one of the most powerful people in my business. She just showed up. She just had the experience of being empowered and she took it and she's developed and she's just completely come out of herself. Controls and make my life easy and she's a pleasure to do business with and she was a gem all her life. What was stopping it was people's thinking. It's who you think about someone, we put them into boxes and we keep them there and we keep it all limited and that keeps it hard for us because we're living with a lot of boxes around us. When we let people out of their boxes and see their potential, which is only restricted by what we think about them, then they can become awesome. And I've seen that in a number of people in our business, more than a number, but she's a shining star. She's, uh, it makes life easy when you get stuff like that in your business, it makes it easy. And that came from me, that change, I'm very clear. And she's very happy. And she's also said this is the best place she's ever worked in her whole working life. She's never been so happy. So I know it's not just me looking out, it's other people looking in. Yeah, I love the couple of things that you pointed to there. One being the infinite creative potential within the individual, often untapped or squandered, if you like, because they're left in a very controlled or fixed mm. environment. And uh, and also looking at yeah how people can blossom when mm. they they get left that no one can plan that mm. because what you've pointed out in the second part of that for me was how almost the ripple effect of coaching goes way beyond personal mm. and how that has continued into your business and I'd say it's more than that Michael it, it's not about our staff it, it it's about them but it radiates beyond them into the customers into our workforce that's out on site into the way we speak and deal with our clients there's a whole new level of relatedness that's there that comes out through that radiates out it goes out in our customers our customers want to do business with us they like us they feel it we're the right feel for them and I found customers want to buy we don't discount we make more money we know they like us people buy from people they would like to do business with and that, that we don't discount we make more money and it's not all about money it's about having a great product with a great feel and a great service yes but we ooze it and people 
want to pay more for that and that increases profitability and I'm working less and earning more and that's really good news for my family. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you point that out because sometimes the feeling of how it is to do business with people is, is lost in business a little bit when you're at the cold, yeah. hard, hard kind of specifications, money, deliverables, dates, mm. and all those important things. And um, yeah, I'm reminded of uh, my local hairdresser who said that people don't come in here for a haircut, they come in for the experience and yeah. let's have a chat and, and they enjoy the whole thing about it. And it's almost become for his regulars like that. and. I don't know if I heard you right, it's a bit more clarity around the what you said about becoming magnetic almost to customers mm. and then being attracted or drawn to you. How did that show up? Um, I, I, I suppose it's, it's just our, our way. I used to be interested in the customer's money. Mm-hmm. And then all my staff were interested in the customer's money, whether it was cutting back here or charging them more, it was all about the money. As it became about the customer experience and about letting go of the money being the number one most important thing, and the business starts to flow, the money came anyway. In fact, a lot more money came. And, and it came because people wanted to spend it. It's not difficult to ask people to pay deposit checks and payments when they love doing business with you. They want to buy your product. Because when it was all about the money, and my thinking was all about the money, it all became about getting the money out of them. And they knew it, they felt it. It was, um, yeah. yeah. It's a real big difference when you notice that when the pressure's off about the money and the time. A year ago, it was all about money and time. So, what do you think was the insight that you'd point that down to? Because that statement alone, I imagine people would be really surprised to hear. Mm. It's so counterintuitive, mm. because sales teams and growing business is all about essentially taking money. You know, getting mm. the order, clarifying the sale, and and being able to 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 bank it. What are the numbers we done this month? There isn't mm. so much around satisfaction. Mm. Companies might focus on dissatisfaction, mm. how many bad levels of feedback or survey mm. numbers have we had. So what would you have to say about that? I, I think the measure of customer satisfaction and the feeling that they get is now in the money. I, I'll look at the money and I'll know that our customers are really, really happy with us and more referrals are going to come. Um, I would probably say the biggest insight is knowing that how important our customers were that they were important, the jobs were important, their families, what they expected from us as a company was also important. And more important than what I thought was important to me myself. I suppose I saw how selfish I was, if that's the insight. I saw that it was, the whole business was all about me. What I wanted, what I needed, the money. It was like a whole business of 20, 30 employees was all set up to serve me and the customers had to give me their money. When I saw that that was how it was and like, oh wow and let go of that. Yeah, I'd say that was the biggest insight that I had. Yeah, I've noticed a real strong shift there in how people in business describe service as a to-do. Say you please and thank yous and and look after people, is everything all right or whatever it is, versus being of service, Mm. which is serving in your being. Yeah. Mm. And not a to-do, it's just how you show up. It's Mm. it's innate. Yeah. It's, It's what you are, yeah. And I don't know if, say, if inside the business that happened straight away automatically. I sort of bounced in and out of it for probably three to four months, yeah. realistically, because you come up against the same conversation with regards to your buyers or people charging overtime or whatever it is, area er- er- in the business, it's, you sort of have a new relationship to that. So, so I wouldn't say the transformation overall came in instantly probably inside me it came through wow this is like a whole new way to see things but actually inside the business it took a while for it to ripple out and um, once it's transformed through the business it, it, it the business is transformed it's it's not returning it's it's we operate that way our customers know it we're expanding we're about to expand into brighton and open a flagship office there southeast london um we're looking for massive growth again this year. We've grown nearly up to 50% already this year. Um, and we're gonna grow another 50% in the next year. And it's not through hard work, it's because people are coming. They're coming to buy the brand and the feel of the company and the people inside here. Yeah, I love what you highlighted there, Ian, because it, that area of direction is not one people would normally look in mm. when they're looking to grow a business. They would look, again, to outside events like better advertising, 
maybe improving their quality. And I can certainly understand how in the beginning there, there would have been a bit of negotiation or discussion around the value of you even putting time into coaching, being outside of the business, yeah. seeing value on that. Yeah. that no one could have predicted what's actually happened as a consequence. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what about managing that? Because that can sometimes be a, a reason for people not to go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose when I started, it always looks like it's really, really expensive. It's going to cost something, right? And I think, well, don't worry, then I'll just cancel it further down now if it's not working. And, and you know, you, I suppose there's something in what you hear as to whether you're going to go ahead. This is different doesn't even look or feel or sound the same how it starts off what we're looking to do everybody's trying to teach me things that they know they're trying to give me knowledge knowledge isn't why I already knew how to build a, a window successful window and door business what I didn't know how to do was to enjoy it from the inside and and be able to empower people to run it I mean for example I take more time off now on holiday and breaks and days off than I've ever taken in my life because I know that, that team behind me will do what they need to do. They don't need me there anymore. The need that I was there was completely in my own self-ego type way of being inside running the business. It, and I didn't see it. I just thought that's the way it has to be. And nothing outside that I've been to before, courses or sales courses showed me that. They just gave me more things to think about. The fundamental change here came around when I saw how I was playing the game inside and saw that I could change that. And then, and as I shifted, everybody shifted. It's a bit like an avalanche. And how would you describe the experience of, of our conversations going as, as we did kind of weekly, pretty much, over that time? And what was the experience of, of that? I probably said it start quite awkward, like didn't really want to have them because it always seemed like, oh God, you know, he's going to think this has gone wrong and that's gone wrong. And, it's, and, and you know, again, I was judging myself about how quickly I was getting this or getting what I should be getting. Um, but after a while, I think things got shorter, more compact. I started to understand actually and see for myself, like, wow, this is quite a powerful sort of way of looking at things, not just in the work environment, but outside in my life, in friends, with my children, in other relationships, right? I started to sort of self-generate it. So after a while, it seemed like the coaching is more like a friendly chat of like, so what's going on in your life? And, and less and less to coach on because the things had gone or dropped away, like dropped away, the, the stress of our work, time's really, really short. Well, well, it is if you think it is. And like, once I'd lost my thinking around time, it's like, oh, it's just thinking that you don't have enough time in the future that hasn't existed isn't, it's just, when it's gone, it's gone. You could, you can see things clearly, you can make decisions. Make decisions faster if you're not worrying about things. You can make decisions really, really fast. If you're worrying about everything that might happen or everything that might have happened, making a decision is not only full of anxiety, it takes time because you've got to ponder every angle. When you know that you're just thinking those things and they can't impact you, you can just make decisions. And if you make a wrong decision, you can change it really, really quickly. There's very few decisions that you can't change. So having that freedom and speed of decision making, I think has also been, when we look at investing money in a plant and equipment, we took the factory next door, we've got another 8,000 square feet production space, that's all happened since the coaching. To make those decisions was really, really clear. It was like I didn't have to think about it. My customers want it, I need to production facility. It's not like they've, they've come here and they're gonna go away. Yeah, I was really clear that I'm coming from a place of solidness of, of my own decision making yeah so yeah more enjoyable at the end Michael there's no doubt it's not the end it's it's more enjoyable less time in coaching yeah it's great I think how you've highlighted so many things there the key kind of takeaway that I got from that was the the fact that you identified that ripple effect which people might not expect if they were looking at coaching originally particularly in a business coach and saying, uh, if someone comes to me and said, oh, this is the problem in the business, of that conversation where people might focus on that, more of maybe a consultative point of view, mm. versus the transformative conversation, where the impact is in every domain of your life. And, yeah. and that ripples out everywhere. Unexpected benefits almost. Mm. And if you go back to the question that you raised earlier about the, about the value, 
I wouldn't like to imagine life if I hadn't had the coaching right now. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the turnover which we have, which is now in the millions. Um, I wouldn't have the time off. I wouldn't have time with my children. Um, I wouldn't have the money that I have. I wouldn't have the team that I had. How do you value that coaching? At the start, you can value it when you don't have these things. But I wouldn't have had these without that. So, you know, you can make your own value of what the coaching was. I, th I think it's a very small amount out of what I've got from it. Yeah. And what would just interesting now, I'll kind of clear you are with that because that's normally people's kind of biggest area of concern or hesitation for moving forward in that it being so tangible, i.e. not like your windows that you're buying a thing, mm -hmm. that there's no guarantees or they don't know what they're going to get, there's nothing to show, no brochure. Mm. How come do you think you saw something or had a, a chink of confidence or whatever it was that, that made you know it was right? I suppose everyone, when you, when, you, when, you, when, when you actually ask them, they're going to know it's their thinking. When you start to point towards the concept of their thinking is in their way, they're in the way of themselves. This is the first thing I've come across that's really said I'm in the way. Without training to be an athlete or training in a sales technique or learning to be a powerful leader by doing other things. This is the first thing that said, look Ian, the way you're thinking about things is actually the thing that's in the way. And I, and I think everybody can relate to that. People know that they have thoughts about their mum or their children or oh, money, I need more of it or time, I haven't got enough of it. It's these conversations that we're so worried about not having enough time that we don't have enough time. Crazy though that sounds, but the only place this this occurs is, is, is inside your, like how you see life. But I never knew that. I went on, I've got a Time Manager International program. I've got planners, I've, I've been to all sorts of time management training. I'm a highly effective individual, but I just filled it back up again. I never had the concept, the feeling of having time. When I made more time, I just put more stuff in and filled it back up. And still, that was a perpetual cycle. The feeling of having time is something completely different. Yeah, and everyone knows that. You don't have to. They may not see it, but when they hear it, they'll know, oh yeah, that is me, actually. I've got a relationship with money, or I've got a relationship with this bloke at work, or when, when that guy's trying to say something, I'm already thinking of the next thing to say to him, so I'm not really listening, so I don't get the value of him. These are the things that, you know, I'll put my hand up first, these are the things that I was doing, and I know other people do. And if I said there's one thing in the way of building your business, it's that. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it, Ian, that with time, how a week can go by in a flash, you wonder where it is on a Friday, and at the same time, you find yourself on a Wednesday morning having the longest week. Mm. And in many ways, we're always given these cues that, little pointers that actually what's going on is our experience of time is what's different. Mm. The clock still moves at the same rate. Yeah. And uh, it's fascinating when you release that up and give yourself more time, just what's possible, because you pointed there to the simplicity behind this as well which again is another block sometimes for people you're saying well you're just saying you changed your perception mm. it was just your thought just your thinking people normally when they would come to coaching and they would expect it to be a course a program you know an agreement over time whatever it is but they would expect something intellectual from that trying to understand it intellectually mm. and maybe expect it to be complex because yeah. your problems at the time um, when we first started speaking seemed pretty complex mm. and so when you're pointed towards a rather simple solution mm. ultimately and yet one big challenge the fact mm. that it's an understanding mm. versus an intellectual learning mm. how was your experience there? everything that I trained in before well I think the co co commonality inside business is that you're gonna it's the direction you're looking in it's, it's not even so much the education side cause I'm, I consider myself as being slightly uneducated from a from what you'd say a school university training college point of view but it's the direction you're looking in. We're looking for more education or something out there that's gonna change us. We're not actually looking on the inside. The simplicity of it, it, it's not that it was simple. It was simple but in the wrong place. It wasn't in the place that I look. So for me, I look for big leaders out there. I look for the Anthony Robbins, the pumped up 
the training, the sales, the education. That's looking in an outward bound direction to get more information in. This is really, really simple, but it's not out there. It's, it's, it's more like what's here. So when we're looking out for it, it's simple, Michael, yes. Yeah. Really, really simple. When you see it, when I didn't see it and I was looking out there in the library or in the bookshop or in the downloadable videos, it doesn't live there because that's just information coming to you. This is how you're generating. Uh, and yeah, it's simple, but it's not obvious and it's slippery. You know? It's yeah. slippery. Yeah, I love how you've have identified that really, that business owners, directors of businesses, what they would, I guess, instinctively or intuitively look towards is having their people coached or a program. So i.e. go on a sales course, mm -hmm. let's go on a team building course, mm -hmm. let's go on a skills development course that will improve your productivity. They're looking out there and you made the huge step, uh, in my view, of, of actually realizing it, that it was actually you were the, the center of improvement. It was your state of mind mm -hmm. that was gonna have the biggest impact on this business. Yes. And that getting out of your own way, letting go of the ego almost to some regards, because plenty of people, I mean, let's be honest, they would be thinking, well, it's clearly not me because I'm a great director, mm. a great owner. I'm working really hard. Mm. So how did you make that shift in the beginning from really focusing on yourself? I, 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 th I think there was some self-realization. I, th I think through the coaching you get to see yourself and, and you get to see small subtle changes that happen and you start to think, well, you know, there's a difference now. I feel different now about this situation. And, and then you, you know, through the process of the next coaching session, you're quite excited to share. You know what I saw the other day? Wow, I wasn't even listening to the guy. I had all this stuff going on in my head and, and you, you start to say, and, and, and you know, you just bounce back and say, okay, there's more. And you start to notice more and more. That, that it, it's actually the same thing all the time. It's, it's, it's your thinking about things that cause you frustration and, and anxiety and worry and not having any time. The other, the other thing I, I will share on that is, is I coach from this as well myself inside my business where people are having issues or upsets or whatever they have. I, I, it's like an understanding and you can share the understanding. You don't have to understand it all, you just know it sort of works this way. It always works this way and, and every person's the same and when they understand it they just get a, a clearer mind and a, and a happier life and you're just more easy in the flow and related to people. Yeah, and, and you can share that. You don't have to be a, you know, a, 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 you just have to start to see it and it will ripple out by your own words. You can't not share it actually. You can't go back to say, oh yeah, I totally agree, this is like this and like this, when you know inside it isn't. If you can ride a bike, you know you can ride a bike. That's the way riding a bike works. But if you don't know how to ride a bike and you're looking at someone riding, it's not so easy to see it. But once you've ridden a bike and you know, you know that it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, so you being in that optimum state of mind and being able to then recognize clearly the implications of the understanding, as opposed to what you pointed out earlier, the Absolutely. application of these five steps, go and do this, go and do that, and then looking for ways to implement. Yeah, There's almost an intuitive understanding about how to roll that out, what the implications are going to be, and therefore, indeed, how you can almost have conversations with staff. Because people really look at I guess that they don't realize what's possible for them in terms of performance mm. and how they could step up and make the changes that they need to make in their business to achieve the goals that they want. Yeah. There's almost an acceptance <coughs> of it not working or I'm doing the best that I can, which is true, you know, with the information you've got, everyone's doing the best they can. Mm. But it's getting new information and making room, clearing out the old and getting new information mm. to, to instinctively know what direction's right. Yes. So how would you how would you speak to someone who perhaps said, Well, it all sounds like it's worked for you here and it all sounds well and good. Mm. But for me this is the, the challenge or they're really fixed in their comfort zone, you know, that unknown world all sounds a little bit woo woo mm. um and uncertain. Mm. Well how, what would you say to that? I'd say I wouldn't be surprised. Because if someone's sitting looking for coaching it means they want to achieve something in the world. And 
if everybody's honest with themselves, they'll notice that they're talking to themselves all the time and having thoughts, and that they've got their own perception of the world. And in my experience at least, the state of mind that you're in and the state of mind you put out to the world has a dramatic impact. And people need coaching and everybody needs coaches. I would choose coaches that can make that lasting, long, profound impact from the inside around the operating system rather than the bits on the outside, a bit like with the car, with the engine, with the power, rather than the color and the accessories. It's it's all looks very nice with the accessories, but it doesn't actually run the engine. What runs the engine is how we appear. You know, sometimes you can go to work and you have a really, really great day. And the next day you've got to work with exactly the same circumstances, but because you're taking with you your opinion of the world, it turns out to be a really poor day. That is what the cause of most of the misery and upset is with regards to everyone in the world, not just businessmen. But that state of mind that you bring in, and that's the area of coaching, that's the one where you can make the most leverage and the most profound change. Once you understand how the system works, you can start to see it for yourself and bring it to every day, maintain calmness, see the vision, make bold statements, decisions where you want to go. That's the only area I'd coach in. I wouldn't choose a coach in any other area. There, all the others are techniques and tactics and dressing. I want to run with the engine. Well, thank you very much, Ian. It's been a real pleasure, as always it is, to sit and chat with you. But uh, particularly on this occasion, I think um, so rewarding to hear how things have changed. Yeah. Um, and how much you're enjoying life now. Great. Well, thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, good luck. Thank you very much. So in summary, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast and what I've had to to share here. So if you're curious or like to hear more, then please do get in touch with me on any of the points covered. It's michael at litwithin, L-I-T, within.co.uk. And I look forward to hearing from you. Otherwise, please do enjoy the rest of the series.